Hello. So, thanks to the organizers for giving me the opportunity to talk about reproducibility with SnakeMake um, in data analysis. So, SnakeMake is a tool for modeling data analysis. What is a data analysis? Data analysis can be seen as a uh, as the process of going from some kind of raw data set over various aggregations, filtrations, transformations, the application of scripts, tools, uh, and so on. Um, to some kind of final results, and those are usually plots and tables, uh, those that you put in your papers, for example. No one can do that by hand, and people have done that for years. And um, the problem with that is um, that once scaling this up to tens, hundreds, or even thousands of data sets nowadays, this will quickly fail. And even if not, um, it will never be a reproducible process that you can exactly repeat another time or at a different place. In order to have a fully reproducible data analysis, one has to consider three dimensions. The first dimension is automation. The key idea is that you need to kind of conduct the entire process from the raw data to the final results without any manual steps, otherwise it will not be reproducible. And while doing that, all the, docu all the parameters, tools and versions have to be documented in order to make this process fully transparent. The second part is uh, scalability, um, particularly when you have big data with tens to hundreds or even thousands of data sets, one needs to parallelize the analysis. This can happen on a single machine, but it can also need um, to be run on a computing platform like a cluster or the cloud. And any reproducibility can only be achieved if um, an analysis can be scaled to any of these platforms seamlessly. Otherwise, others will probably not have the system being able to reproduce your analysis. So the, uh, whatever analysis is written, it shall be independent of the underlying computing platform. The final aspect is the portability. So each data analysis will, will need a kind of some, um, some software stacks for each step in terms of what tools and uh, languages are used, uh, what particular um, scripting environments are used, uh, and packages that are needed. And this entire stack needs to be deployed to a new system in order to reproduce the data analysis there. Um, hence, in order to make this fully reproducible, one needs to kind of enclose the deployment of the actual software stack into the execution of the data analysis itself. Otherwise, it will be a manual step and there, thereby subject to, uh, to failures or errors. Okay, so to achieve all these three dimensions for full reproducibility, one can use various systems. One of those is SnakeMake. SnakeMake is quite popular with over 200,000 downloads since we started counting in 2015. It has been cited over 600 times, and in the last two years, these are about three new citations per week on average. And they occur in a lot of high impact journals. And uh, regarding the field, one can say that SnakeMake is now. Uh, currently mostly used in bioinformatics, but it's used in many other fields as well. And uh, it's a general system, so it's uh, completely independent of the scientific field. So now let's go through the three dimensions and how SnakeMake achieves re reproducibility with them. So first, automation. The key idea of SnakeMake is that you define your data analysis workflow in terms of rules. Each rule describes one step of your data analysis and a rule is defined in a text-based language that is actually a, a syntactical extension of Python, uh, which allows you to kind of directly read um, by eye what is actually done and what output is generated from which input files. So the key idea um, of SnakeMake rules is that they have a name, they have a set of input files, they have a set of output files, and they have something that describes how to generate the output from the input. For example, this can be a shell command. One should add that rules are um, not limited to concrete files, but instead they are generalizable via wildcards, as you can see here, a wildcard for a sample in this case. And these wildcards allow you to scan over uh, samples, they allow you to scan parameter spaces, and basically provide arbitrary flexibility in particular, since you can have multiple wildcards in input and output files. Rules can be annotated with a lot of additional information, like log files, 
parameters needed. And they can also be dynamically determined and resource usage in terms of the used threads, uh, the amount of memory needed, um, special resources like accelerators, GPUs, and so on. Once you have such a set of rules, SnakeMake can automatically determine the dependencies between them in order to generate whatever targets you request from it. And by this, it yields um, a directed acyclic graph of jobs, as you can see here on the right, which determines the de defines the dependency structure between those jobs. And obviously, independent parts of this graph can be executed in parallel automatically. And SnakeMake makes use of that property to have um, a fully scalable data analysis with no additional effort for you. Rules are, as I said, not limited to shell commands. For example, they can also integrate with scripts that you can write in, into external files in various scripting languages like Python, R, and Julia. And the key feature of this script integration is that it's boilerplate free. So it's not necessary to write a command line parser inside of your scripts that co converts values, reads input files, and so on and so forth. Instead, you can directly access all the properties of the rule. Let's have a look at an example for Python. What you can see here is that we directly access the first input file and the first output file. We could do the same for parameters and we can do the same in an analogous uh, syntax for R and Julia as well. Apart from scripts that would be just plain text files, in a sense, uh, SnakeMake also integrates with Jupyter Notebooks, allowing you to semi-interactively develop workflows. Given such a rule where you define that it shall use a notebook to generate the output, you can instruct SnakeMake to actually interactively open this notebook for you, then edit it in the usual Jupyter um, environment, allowing you to basically draft for a particular uh, instance of this rule um, what analysis should be conducted and how the output files should look like. And once you're happy, you can save the notebook and SnakeMake will automatically generalize it for reuse in other jobs coming from the same rule. So for the next sample, you will use exactly the same notebook that you drafted once before. And of course, you can at any time re-edit the notebook to refine your analysis and um, then rerun the necessary jobs again automatically. Um, and further, SnakeMake is actually able to also use uh, so-called reusable SnakeMake wrappers for certain tools that are very common in your field. Um, in bioinformatics, that an example would be SAM tools. And the key idea of these wrappers is that the, all the idiosyncrasies of these tools are hidden away in um, a central repository that you can directly use and address each wrapper individually inside of your rules and thereby um, hide away all the complexities of running certain tools and basically also modularize it away. So whenever you have some re um, reoccurring step that are used in many, many workflows, you can put them in such a wrapper repository and then reuse them in, in all your individual workflows. SnakeMake has a lot of versatile um, possibilities of output file handling. So for example, it provides the ability to mark output files as temporary and then will take care of automatically deleting them once they are not needed anymore, thereby saving disk space, for example. Um, it allows you to write protect automatically output files. This can be handy if you have some very long running step and don't want to lose accidentally the results of it. And finally, it allows streaming between jobs so that um, whatever result is written here is never really written to the disk. Instead, it's just directly streamed to the next consuming job and thereby saving some, some space and disk IO instead. The next dimension to consider is the scalability. So how does SnakeMake achieve scalability? The key idea of SnakeMake is that the workflow definition itself shall be independent of the computing platform and the available resources. And um, this is achieved by um, allowing rules to define resource usage in terms of threads and memory. And this can be even dynamic, like reacting on input file size, reacting on certain parameters and thread usage and so on and so forth. Then the SnakeMake scheduler solves a multidimensional knapsack problem that tries to maximize the parallelism while considering all the given resource constraints and the resource usage annotated in the rules. Independent jobs are then automatically scheduled in parallel. Dep 
depending on the number of cores, for example, you provide to SnakeMake or the number of jobs you want to run in a cluster and so on. In a cluster and the cloud, SnakeMake automatically passes the requ resource requirements to um, the, the respective backend so that the um, cluster management system or the cloud orchestration service knows where to schedule a job. By this mechanism, SnakeMake is able to scale your workflow without modification to any available computing platform. So from simple workstations to compute servers to clusters, grid computing where you don't have a shared file system even, and cloud computing like Kubernetes or also the Google Cloud plat Platform and Amazon Web Services. All this is controlled via a simple command line interface that allows you to define the number of cores, um, the cluster system to use in terms of submission binaries and um, things like Kubernetes and uh, AWS cloud and so on and so forth. Of course, all these parameters can be stored in profiles so that you don't need to remember them upon each invocation and so on. Another aspect of um, scalability is um, the actual um, avoidance of redundant computation between workflows. So you will all know the situation that usually data analysis does not, does not only need specific data sets uh, that are exclusive to a certain project, but instead most of the time will also rely on some shared data. And often this shared data is, is not simply just available, but needs to be post-processed, converted and so on. Such steps can, in order to save space, of course, be excluded from the actual workflow and just re just referred from a, from a configuration or so. But the downside of that is that the that you lose all the provenance information about such uh, such shared steps. Um, hence, SnakeMake provides a mechanism to um, still include uh, shared steps into the actual data analysis while avoiding redundant computation. This works as follows. So the key idea is, is um, that SnakeMake is able to hash the code and the parameters used for each job that is considered in a workflow. And out of these hashes, SnakeMake can actually build a blockchain, basically a chain of hashes, leading to an individual and fully descriptive hash value for each output file generated in your workflow. Now this hash value, if it's, um, if it's valuable to, to use it like that, can be used to store a certain output file in a central cache, like for example, a cache for your institute or for your cluster system, and then others using the same workflow, or even the dif a different workflow, but that happens to actually conduct the same, sa the same shared steps, can reuse the cache results that you generated once, thereby bypassing the need to rerun all these jobs again and also saving disk space because the cache is transparently used via symlinking actually. So this allows you to um, fully describe a data analysis in, in terms of all the steps that are actually needed to, to run it while not losing um, the ability to avoid redundant, computa redundant computations between workflows. Finally, let's have a look at uh, the portability dimension. So as I said, a workflow or a data analysis will, lead, will need a certain software stack. And usually this will be heterogeneous stuff, software stack that might even differ between different parts of the analysis. It can be quite a lot of work to regenerate such a software stack on a new unprepared machine. Hence, it has to be kind of part of the analysis in order to have full reproducibility. SnakeMake achieves this kind of integration by integrating with the Conda Package Manager, which is a general purpose um, cross-language package manager that allows to um, download um, tools and libraries from all kinds of language ecosystems. And the key feature of Conda is that it al allows to define isolated software environments in terms of tools and the versions needed, which can then invoke by be uh, annotated from SnakeMake. So can basically annotate a rule to use a certain software environment and then SnakeMeg will, upon execution, run the rule inside of this environment instead of your general system environment. And automatically, of course, download the required software tools. So Conda has a lot of channels available that offer uh, software packages from all kinds of scientific fields and should cover all the, all the needs that are there nowadays. Of course, an alternative to using Conda is uh, containers, as many of you will know. 
So um, Snakemake obviously also integrates with containers, container system in terms of singularity. And um, this can be achieved by annotating a rule with uh, the container directive, like you see here. And then Snakemake will run whatever command or script is given for the rule uh, inside of that container. Apart from using Conda or containers, Snakemake also provides uh, usage of a sweet spot between the two. And that is um, using the container environment to define the operating system for the data analysis and using Conda to define the software stack for each individual rule. The upside of this is that Conda is much easier to prototype. You can easily modify these simple YAML files. You don't have to upload a new container each time you modify a software version, but still you get the operating system um, um, guarantees given by using a container. Technically, this means that SnakeMac will basically create these Conda environments inside of the container while running the analysis. So once you have conducted your analysis and obtained all your results, you might want to report them to others in terms of uh, just collaborators or um, in terms of publishing your analysis in, in a paper. And uh, SnakeMake provides um, automated HTML reports that can, can be generated automatically out of your workflow. Um, consisting of results and provenance information for your entire workflow execution. So for example, it shows the, the graph of jobs, it shows statistics about runtime and when each result was generated. It uh, provides you with a um, detailed listing of all the configuration values that you chose and um, it lists all the results that you mark as uh, being uh, eligible for e inclusion in the in the report. And then such results, if they are plots, can be directly viewed from the report itself. And um, it's possible to um, investigate um, the source code behind each result so that you can basically see what exactly was done to generate a certain plot and so on. Okay, so SnakeMake has a lot more features. So for example, it provides the ability to um, define conditional execution, even reacting on uh, contents of output files that allows you to rewire the graph of jobs upon um, certain results, for example. Um, it provides the ability to partition your uh, data analysis into, into parts that shall be executed on physically the same machine. So this is important in terms of cluster or cloud execution because it can save you a lot of time. Um, for example, um, downloading files can be avoided. Temporary files may, might not be needed to be stored in, in certain central storages when partitioning jobs together and so on. By this, it provides even more facilities to scale your data analysis to whatever system uh, shall be used for running it. The scheduling, as I mentioned already, is resource constrained and you can use it, for example, to easily constrain to use only a certain amount of memory, a certain amount of CPUs, a certain amount of jobs or um, a certain amount of accelerators like GPUs and so on. Um, it provides various ways to constrain or enforce uh, jobs, job execution, thereby giving you full control over what parts of your data analysis shall actually be executed in a particular run. Um, all data provenance information that is available is automatically re recorded. Um, log files are handled automatically so that, that you can easily detect errors and um, see what, what went wrong if something fails. And then um, it integrates with uh, CWL as, as means of interoper interoperability between workflow uh, languages. So for example, you can export SnakeMac workflows to CWL and then run it on a different system in a different workflow management system, for example, by re-importing it. And uh, many more features that, that I don't cover here in this talk. So to conclude, um, with the human readable specification language, the ability to uh, use uh, reusable modules, the seamless execution on all platforms without the need to adapt the workflow definition and the integrated package management and container management, SnakeMac covers all three dimensions, namely automation, scalability and portability that are needed for, fu for, for fully reproducible data analysis.
Thank you. Now I'm happy to take your questions.